Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at a brand new DCC control system from Hornby. This new DCC control system is quite unique in that it doesn't rely on a physical command station or DCC controller to operate it. In fact, if you wanted to, you could just use one of these or one of these, just standard DC analog train controllers, except you wouldn't be using these to control any trains. You'd be setting them to full power and then leaving them alone and letting this new DCC system do its job. So effectively, you'd just be using your old controller as a power supply, which does mean if you wanted to, you could literally just use a standard power supply. You could connect that up to your track as as long as it's the right voltage and then you can hide it away so that there is no visible physical controller on your layout at all. Okay but how do we control trains then? Well the answer to this is of course the smartphone or the tablet, some sort of smart device and I've got to say I think this is a brilliant idea because most people do own a smartphone and a smartphone is effectively quite a sophisticated computer which is more than capable of controlling your entire model railway and I've often felt that it seems a little bit of a waste to go out and spend an awful lot of money on another brain for your model railway when you've got one that could do the job quite adequately already in your pocket. Now I say most people have a smartphone already, of course that's not everybody, so if you're someone who doesn't already have a smartphone, this might not appeal to you quite as much. Of course you could go out and buy a smartphone if you really wanted to use this system, but then you wouldn't be saving a lot of money because smartphones are expensive. Also, there are plenty of people who have no desire at all to use their model railway via a touchscreen. These people prefer the tangibility of a physical model railway controller, and so if you're one of those people, again, this system may not appeal to you. Although the decoders themselves may be of interest, because they do have a number of advantages over other decoders. But that's the next question then, so what is the actual hardware in this system? And it is, of course, the decoders. These are the new products. So I've got two of them here. These are the HMDC or the HM7000 new Bluetooth decoders. So under this new system, your smart device, be it a smartphone or a tablet, will communicate directly with these decoders via Bluetooth, which eliminates the need for a standalone controller. I bought two of them here, these cost me £62.99 from Hattons each, I've got a 21 pin and a next 18 pin decoder, besides that I think they are pretty much the same thing. But the remarkable thing about these is that these are sound decoders, quite sophisticated sound decoders which give you an awful lot of flexibility and customizability. For instance, you can put whatever sounds you want onto these very easy without any specialist technology or tools or software. That's really quite impressive. Even more impressive still is the price. These are fully fledged sound decoders by the sounds of things and they are just £62.99 at the retailers. So incredibly inexpensive when you consider that these are decoders, sound decoders, but also controllers as well. If you're interested in picking some of these up, I've got affiliate links down in the description. And this is all you need because the software for your smartphone, the apps, they are free to use. But all of this sounds absolutely amazing if they work well. I don't know what the performance is like here, I don't know what the sound quality is like. If these are too difficult to use, if they don't work properly, if they're too fiddly, if they're unreliable, if, 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 then there's nothing to see here, let's move on. But I don't know, we need to try these out, let's see what they are like. Let's get started. So, like I say, I've got two decoders here. I've got a Next18 one and a 21 pin. I wanted to try to because I wanted to chip a diesel and a steam locomotive to try both of the different sort of sound suites, if you will. I'm also interested in the Next18 pin decoder specifically because obviously Next18 decoders tend to be really quite small. So if these are big chonking things, that could cause a problem, particularly if you're gonna fit it into a smaller locomotive like a tank engine. So I think we'll start off with that one and take a look at it. 
First though, let's see what the front of the packaging promises. So it says this is a Bluetooth and DCC sound decoder. Now that's interesting because it suggests that you can use these with a regular DCC controller, which I think could be of use to some people. It says this is high fidelity triplex, so that's sort of triple track sound if you will. Three channel sound system, which means it's capable of playing up to three sounds at the same time, which is better than the twin track system that Hornby used to use. Um, Tri mode, ah, functions with the HMDCC app control, DCC and DC controllers, right. So yes, you can use this on a standard DCC controller. Now that is compelling. Hopefully then, that means that you could set one of these decoders up with your smartphone, you could load the sounds on, and then you could go back and use your standard DCC controller, uh, like this one, the NCE Power Cab, to actually control these decoders. That would have a lot of advantages because you'd get all the advantages that these decoders bring, sound customizability, etc., etc. You would get the low price, but you could still use your physical, tangible controller. That is interesting. And you can instantly write and read CVs, which is pretty good as well. Direct connection to the decoders. Right, not had this open yet. Uh, let's see what we actually get inside then. This is the next 18 pin one. Again, I'm expecting the two to be largely the same, but we'll see. Okay, we've got everything out of there. No, there's still something else in. Right, so first things first, we have the star of the show, the decoder. That's all it is. Bluetooth receiver, DCC controller, and presumably some sort of storage so that you can have the sound stay on the decoder. Hopefully that is the way this works. Hopefully the sound files will be uploaded to the decoder so that the sounds stay on it and you can use that with your DCC controllers. I suppose it is possible that your smart device may just stream the sounds to the decoder. If that was the case, it would be a little less good. Still interesting I guess but no hopefully the sound will be stored on the decoder that would be useful these do then come with a speaker as you can see that's a small sugar cube speaker I reckon you could reasonably easily fit all of this stuff into a relatively small loco what do you reckon yeah it's not too large is it you will get a better sense of the size when I start putting this into a loco. So yeah, we'll see how that is. We've got these, let's have a look at this. So it's a sprue with all sorts of different speaker enclosures, all for the same speaker, of course. And I guess you would select the one that is the best fit. Obviously you want as big as possible. So if you're putting this into a diesel and you've got lots of room, you'd pick a large one. But if you're very limited on space, you would obviously have to choose a smaller one. The sound wouldn't perhaps be as good, but at least you could still use it. So yeah, I'll see which one of those is appropriate to use later on. And then we've got the paperwork. <laughs> There's a lot of it, look at all this. So this first one doesn't seem to be of much interest. It's just the CE declaration of conformity. That doesn't look very interesting. We've got a quick start guide. So I will go over this in just a second, but it works much the same as the HMDC app did. So you scan the QR code, which is here. You will then download the app, presumably, and hopefully everything will happen on screen there and we can just get started like that. Right, so this is actually step four. Step one is the initial setup. So you've got to plug in the decoder to the locomotive. That's the first step. Uh, for Bluetooth only control, that is what I'm going to be doing today. You need to just power the track using a compatible power supply. Does it say what voltage we need? I would assume it would be sort of 12 to 15 or something like that. Um, no, I don't think it does say that's annoying, isn't it? But still, you get the idea. You just connect power to the track. There is such a thing as a new power bank module, which you can connect to these decoders in much the same way as you'd connect a speaker to it, so that even if power is interrupted to your locomotive, the decoder will stay alive and you'll still be able to communicate with it for quite a while, as I understand it. So that's awesome. You've got a section on installing the speaker enclosures. Um, yeah, so this is basically what I said a minute ago. I hope that if a loco already has a speaker installed that this won't be necessary. I might try and pick a loco with a speaker installed so that I don't have to faff around. But if not, we've got options, so that's pretty good. And then, yeah, we come on to the bit about the app, which is fine. 
it says that all of the sound profiles for the HM7000 decoders are free of charge. That's awesome. I don't know what sort of selection there is on there yet, so we'll have to find out. But it looks like we can get to all of those through the app, so we'll worry about that later on. And then, what is this about? Is it the same thing? Perhaps in a different language. Yeah, it is. Okay, so it's actually relatively simple then. Let's have a quick look at the 21 pin version. I'm expecting this to be much the same thing, but we'll at least have a look at the size and see what the difference in the size is. So we've still got the sprue, we've still got the instructions, we've still got the speaker, all the same. But here is the 21 pin version of the decoder, and I would say it's only slightly larger than the Next18 one. Yeah, a little bit wider, pretty much the same length really and obviously the components on there seem to be largely the same so interesting very very interesting i'm going to select a loco to start with then uh, let's go with the next 18 one to begin with see how that goes i'll install it i will power it i will download the app see how that works and let's see if we can get some trains running using hornby's new system Let's get started then. So the loco I've selected for the Next18 decoder is this one. This is the Backman Johnson 1P. And this has a Next18 pin socket in it, and it's also a relatively small loco. So if the decoder fits into this with no problems, then I can say with quite some confidence that there are a lot of locos that these decoders will fit into. I also think it has a pre-fitted speaker inside it, which hopefully will solve that problem. And it's also got lights and such inside. Uh, the Firebox has some LEDs inside it, which again will hopefully put the decoder through quite the test. But does it fit? That has to be the big question. So let's find out. First job, let's whip the body off. Right, it is off. Okay, so we've got a blanking plate right here on the top. And on first glance, yeah, I would say there seems to be a fair amount of space there. Can't say for sure whether it's going to fit though with the body on as well. So I guess let's give it a try. So I can honestly say, I don't think I have ever fitted a Next18 pin decoder before. Um, I'm just thinking about the best way to get this one out. Hang on. There we go. And there's the socket. Luckily it is right at that end. So <laughs> with a bit of luck, this will fit in. It does look though as though it's gonna be quite tight. But tight is fine, as long as it fits. Here we go then. So I think you just pop it in, don't you? Right. So it is sort of protruding a little bit further than the end of the uh, Locos circuit board. So I think it's going to be pretty close to the mark really, isn't it? Although, yeah, you can see there is a speaker there already. So I haven't got to worry about cramming that in. Okay, well, it should be fairly obvious whether or not this is going to fit. So let's just give it a try. Make sure the wires are out of the way. Have I got this the right way? No? <laughs> okay. Right, so it's very, very close, but I don't think it's going to fit, unfortunately. Right, so, oh yeah, and it's sort of dislodged the decoder a bit. Okay, so that's a shame. Yeah, it's too large even for this sort of medium-sized tank engine. So I'm going to have to pop it back out again and find a different loco. So that's the first disadvantage. Seems the decoders are quite a lot chunkier than the manufacturers of locomotives are expecting. Right, another Backman Loco here. This is the 94XX. This also has a pre-fitted speaker and a Next18 decoder socket in it. So let's see if it's gonna fit in here. I'm hoping I can actually find a Next18 Loco that I've got that has a speaker and a socket because it really does seem as though space is becoming a problem. Obviously, I might have to find one that doesn't have a speaker in it already, but then I need even more space to fit the speaker too. So yeah, the practicality, I'm starting to question a little bit, but we'll try again. I looked at my review of this Loco and there does seem to be a fair bit of space where the decoder socket is. So hopefully I'll be able to squeeze one in. Let's see. Hmm. Again, not entirely sure now that I'm looking at it physically. It still looks a little tight, doesn't it? But anyway, let's have a go. 
not going to fit. All right, it may do, it may do, but it's very, very tight. No, it isn't going to. No, it isn't going to, unfortunately. It's going to be right up against the motor mount and the wires have still got to go there. So that's another fail. I'll go back to the drawing board. I'll see if I can find another loco that this might fit into. Right, try one more loco. I've got the Backman E1 here. I have my doubts, to be honest, whether it's going to fit into this one. I guess what I will do is, if not, I'll try and find a diesel with a next 18 pin socket and uh, we'll fit this, this, this one into a diesel. And I'll try and find a, a steam loco with a tender with a 21 pin socket and hopefully the 21 pin socket will fit into a loco's tender and then I'll, I'll be able to, I suppose, fit the speaker too because most of the tender locos with 21 pin sockets don't have a pre-fitted speaker. So, yeah. Um, Compatibility seems like it's an issue. Um, how much room have we got here? Uh, I can tell already that's not going to fit. The circuit board inside the loco is right up against the inner body, so I don't think that's going to fit. No, it's not, is it? Let's give it a try. At least I tried. Let's see. Yeah, no, nah, it's never going to fit. Much, much too large. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and find a diesel then, hopefully, with a 21 pin socket. No, nope, with an X18 socket. And maybe I'll have a bit more luck with that. Right, so I've been looking through some more of my reviews, looking at the decoder sockets on lots of different locos. I've got a Backman V2 now. Is it V3, V2? Can't find a diesel that's going to have uh, a, a X18 socket in it, at least not from memory. So we're going to try this one. <laughs> we'll see if this is any better. At the moment, though, I'm not very impressed. I have loads of Next 18 pin locos, and so far, none of them are suitable. Right, so this decoder socket is in the coal bunker. I don't know if this one's going to have a speaker on it, though. I don't think it does. So, well, we'll have to try. Here we go. I doubt the decoder will even fit, so speaker, we might have to forget. Uh, we'll see, though. Again, though, it's poking out, isn't it? Look, oh, it's poking out the side there. So it's not going to fit, is it? Let's try. Yeah, no. Nowhere near. Right. So, Hornby's Next 18 pin decoder. Don't buy it. It will not fit into your Next 18 pin locomotives because the manufacturers are not expecting a decoder to be that large. So that is perfectly useless, unfortunately. I'm going to send that back and get my money back. Right, let's find a 21-pin loco then, and let's try and fit the 21-pin decoder into it. Right, D11, 21-pin socket. Let's give this one a try. Uh, yeah, a little bit disappointed now. As far as I'm concerned, this system has fallen at the first hurdle because the decoders don't fit into any of the locos I've got. But... Hopefully the same will not be true of the 21 pin. So let me get into this tender. Let's see what we can do. Right, so we've got some space inside here. Hopefully enough for a decoder and also the speaker and one of the housings. I'll have to go with, I could probably go with the largest one available actually, but first let's just carefully pull out the old decoder. Right. And I'm hoping that this big housing here will fit in, hopefully. I might have to take these screw terminals off, but yeah, otherwise, hoping that will fit. Right, leave it with me, I'll give it a go. Right, so I got it all in there. I didn't use the big enclosure in the end because it wouldn't have fit back inside the body. So I've gone with one of the slightly smaller ones. Decoder obviously fits, not a huge amount of space in there with the decoder in, but it does fit, so hopefully I can now move on. Right, let's have a look at this app then. So I'm gonna try and scan the QR code with my iPad because it's a bit bigger, so you'll be able to see the screen a little bit better. Right, so it's come up with this on the App Store. It's got a good rating so far. Let's get it and let's see if it's gonna work. Right, the app is launching. Is Bluetooth on? That's what I need to figure out. Yes, it's allowed. Yeah, I got Bluetooth on. Right, so let me just log in. Oh, goodness, hang on. 
Right, I am logged in. It says we've got no linked devices, so let's change that. I've got my Loco on the track, by the way, and I've put full power to it through my Gauge Master controller. So it should be on. Let's start the scan. Let's see what we find. All right, well, we've got something. <laughs> Unless my next door neighbor is doing the same thing, hopefully that will be it. Uh, right, we've got to wait for the scan to finish. Now it has. Let's see if we can link up to that. C6E9 it says. Not sure. Let's wait and see. Right, no, we need to update before we can use it. Right. I thought it was brand new. How come it's got updates already? Right, let's wait. Update in progress. Right, the update is done. Hopefully now we can actually try this. Okay, locomotive profile detected. Would you like to fetch and import the latest locomotive profile function map? I don't know what that means, but yes. Please power cycle your decoder. So I need to disconnect it for five seconds. Okay, right, that should be done. Right, I did it. Right, is it connected then? Let's, yeah, there we go. It looks like it is, I've just got something on there. Right, so what's going on with this then? Loco address, so it looks as though straight away we can start setting some loco addresses. So let's try that for a start. We're set to three right now. Let me go and check what the running number of the loco was. So it's 501, so let's put that in. 501, is that it? I can't see what I've typed. Yeah, all right. And let's put the name again. This is to scroll up. Uh, let's just put the D11 in. Okay, enter. And is that it? It's like not saying programmed or anything, but I've I've put it in there. So yeah, we'll have a look. Um, it's going to be on Bluetooth control, I think. Yeah, that's already set. Vehicle state active. Acceleration rate, deceleration rate. We can set that. Global volume, that's quite important. Yeah, and that's set to a sort of low at the moment. Right, let's have a look at these function maps then. Is this to do with the sound? No function maps. Export existing setup to get started. All right, well, hasn't really explained that to me. Um, okay, browse, browse profile, that's probably what I want, isn't it? Let's see, okay. So we've got lots of different locos on here by the looks of things with profile. So that's a black five, end of list. Okay, must be more than that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so I doubt that Hornby will have a D11 on here. So I'm going to have to pick something that is sort of similar. So it's like a two cylinder loco, isn't it? Um, with inside cylinders. So maybe the 4F will be a good idea, potentially. Can I see anything better? They've got a lot of profiles on here, as you can see. Uh, let's have a look on here. Are these the same things? Now these look like they're diesels, aren't they? Well, no, there's some steam. All right, uh, we've got a 2P on there. That's probably going to be quite similar-ish. Shall we try one of those then? That, that seems to be the most sensible, doesn't it? Let's go with a 4F then. And there we go. Now I guess we can install it. So let's try installing the profile. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I guess there was a tutorial system, wasn't there? So if I get stuck, I can look at that. But so far, it, I mean, it does seem to be straightforward enough that um, you can just sort of figure it out. So I'm assuming it's putting the sound files onto the decoder now, which of course we can change at a later date if this isn't suitable, or if Hornby come out with some better fitting profiles for the loco I've got. While we wait, I should say I have been trying some other Next 18 locos. I had a go with the Rapido Hunslet. There, there was enough sort of length for the decoder to fit on that one, but not enough width. So we're still no better off. Right, well, when that's done, I'll come back to you. Okay, so that is done. It did take quite a long time, sort of five, 10 minutes. Yeah, more like 10 minutes, really. So not a very quick process, but I suppose definitely quicker and easier than having to blow the sounds yourself to the decoder. So there we go, I can dismiss that now. Right, let's figure out how I get to my controller then. I'm guessing that's probably going to be it. Let's have a go and see if the decoder is actually connected and working there. Now, have we got a whistle? No. A whistle? Okay. Um, I've got my D11 on. Um, let me just see if it's going to move. 
No. All right, well, <laughs> I need to try and troubleshoot this then. Let's go down to the track. I will see if I can figure out what's going on and then I'll give it a try. Okay, so it seems to be working now. I couldn't find any reason why it wasn't. I just restarted the app and then it started to work. So now if I turn on the sound, we get some action here and we can look at the list of functions right here. So we've got whistles at last. Yeah, they're going to be 4F whistles, obviously, so not absolutely ideal. But you've got all of the usual sound effects. You've got your coal shoveling. I have to say the quality of the sound seems absolutely fine. I haven't got the largest enclosure in use here, but it seems to be just okay. Uh, we've got multiple pages of these as well. So let's have a look. We've got doors closing. And gone. We've still got the coal being shoveled. Where is it? No? No, oh, it's stopped now. Okay, it just took a while to stop. Uh, flange squealing. There we go. So you've got quite a lot on here. I would have said this is probably more than on your standard TTS decoder. Coupling, that's quite a nice one. Very immediate as well. Yeah, that's good. And uh, even a third page. There you go, there's a look. Uh, that seems to be more dedicated to lighting, but you've still got a few more options there. And then in terms of performance, we've got uh, a speed slider here, so we can go very slowly, I suppose. Bit of a blast there. And we're going in reverse. As you can see, the performance seems to be absolutely fine. Uh, can change direction. There you go. What's the brake button do? Makes the loco stutter for a second. Oh, interesting. You can just hold it down and stop it. And now it stays stopped. All right, I'm not sure. Let's try a bit faster and try that brake again. <laughs> Let's go past again so you can actually see the loco. Yeah, I don't, don't know about that brake button. Let's try again. All right, brake. All right, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so... <laughs> Not quite how you'd expect a Steam Loco to behave, but yeah, I suppose that could be useful. And now it's stopped. Alright, but yeah, it works. That's the ultimate point. So, locomotive settings. You've got all of this to choose from. You can change the address there and the name. I suppose that will reprogram the decoder as address. You've got options to change the acceleration and deceleration rate. I suppose for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll turn them right down so that we've got immediate control there um, look it's quite loud as it is and the sound is only set to about one third volume so let's see what it's like if I turn it right up I don't know how long it will take to oh yeah that's quite loud let's see if it distorts oh god yeah it does distort so you don't want it too loud I don't think that is quite impressively loud though yeah let's make that a bit more sensible probably go for a, about where it was to start with yeah that's not bad and then obviously you've got a list of functions in here as well uh, this looks like it's the same as what we got on the other menu but it sort of fills the screen now and then we've got the address cv editor and i actually had to reset the cvs i think you can do that yeah there you go so it this is how quickly it can read all of the cvs There you go, so about 5-10 seconds and it can read them all. And you've got control here over all of the different CVs, consist addresses, everything. <laughs> I don't know why I, I decided to mention that one. But yeah, as you can see you've got it all and I think you can literally just tap them and change them. I won't do anything to anything, but uh, yeah, that's really cool. You've got great control here. Alright, well that seems to work then, doesn't it? Oh, and folks, guess what? I found a loco that the Next18 pin decoder will fit into. It is the TTA1. <laughs> so how nice that one of Hornby's own locos has enough space to fit the decoder. A TT loco, no less. But I can't find any double O ones. But still, I guess I can test this decoder now. How fabulous. So the TT Scotsman that I've got actually already has a speaker pre-fitted into its tender, so it really was just a case of snapping the decoder in. 
Anyway, the Loco is onto the TT layout, as you can see, and powering it, I've just got my standard analog, mind you, Gauge Master controller, just set to full power, and I've left it there. I've already set up the Loco, I've put its address number in and everything, and I've chosen the profile for the TT Scotsman, and as you can see, it's taking quite a while. It's a couple of minutes in, and it's still estimating that there's another 11 minutes or so to go, so it is gonna take quite a while, but like I say, it does seem to be uploading the audio to the decoder, which is fantastic, especially if you're looking to use these decoders on just a regular DCC controller. So I'll come back to you in 10 minutes or so, and then I'll give the TT Flying Scotsman a try on Hornby's new HM7000. Right, that is job done then. Hopefully we now have a whole suite of sounds installed onto my TT Scotsman. So let's see if we do. I'm just restarting the app again because it didn't work last time. So I can select my loco up in the top corner, well, in the top half of the screen here. So there's the D11 I did earlier. Here's the Scotsman. Oh, still haven't got the sounds on here. Hmm. And the loco I think is working. Yeah, we've got the loco working. But I'm not getting any of the sound options that I should have installed. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess the only thing to do is to try again. Oh, God. Okay. Well, I'll try it one more time before I pronounce it a fail, but uh, okay, well, we'll see. Right, it has been another small eternity. I've waited for the files to copy over again, and I've just cycled the power to the decoder. So that's done. Sound pack installed. Dismiss. Please say it's there now. Let's try restarting the app. I didn't see it on that list to start with. Let's try again, but I'm just not getting the sounds. There's no functions listed on here. What I will do is I'll do some more testing on this TT Loco to begin with, and then I will switch this decoder over to DCC mode. I'll plug in one of my DCC controllers and I will see if the sounds are actually on there. Maybe it's just something on the software side that uh, is causing them not to be displayed. But yeah, that's not right. I haven't got any sounds to play here. So, okay, let's get the loco running. There's a few things I want to test. So my first question is, if and when the power is interrupted to a loco on this system, how long does it take for the decoder to wake back up and A, continue what it was doing before the power was cut, and B, respond to new commands? So first of all, let's just cut power. There we go. And let's wake it back up again. See how long does it take? So let's just say the loco's gone over a point here and cut out. <laughs> Back on, uh, nothing's happening though. Right, so loco cuts out on a point, it stops dead. <laughs> Giving it some new commands, trying to control it. Nothing. Now I will try this of course on my D11 because that has a different decoder which we know is working better than this. But yeah, this one, not working at all. Now I cut the power. Uh, let's restart the app. TT Scotsman, is it going to work now? Yeah, now it's going. Let's try that once more. Let's cut the power just for a second. Yeah, it's not waking up and resuming. So. If you lose power to a locomotive, particularly a tank engine or something like that, where that might happen if your track's a little bit dirty. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it has resumed this time then, but that was incredibly slow. Let's go forwards. Let's try one more time because two different things happened there. So let's try it one more time. I'll cut it off again. Just for a second. Just to simulate a bit of a cutout over the, some points or something. Yeah, we've got a good long while to wait, haven't we? So this is, to me, starting to be a little bit impractical. Yeah, that. how long was that? That was ages. And I have got control over it again, by the looks of things. It's just taking a really long time for it to resume, and I haven't got sound. 
So I'm going to stop messing around with the Scotsman now. Uh, let's just change the settings if possible. Um, let me go to local settings, I think it is. And I can change that over to DCC. So hopefully now I'll be able to plug in a DCC controller and run this on DCC. First though, let's do those cutoff tests on the D11. Right, so I'm back over to the D11. Let's put the sound on. There we go. And I'll do the same thing. I'll cut this off just for a second and we'll see how long it takes for the sound to come back on. So off, on. <laughs> yeah, and that's quite the delay, isn't it? So really, you're going to want that power bank. Without it, this becomes impractical. I mean, maybe a loco like this with lots of pickups on it, maybe that will be okay. But for something like a tank engine, you're not going to fit a decoder and a power bank in there. Heck, you can barely fit the decoder in. And without the power bank, it's just going to be no good at all. So yeah, that's not ideal. What I now want to do is test the range. So I'm going to take my iPad with me. I've got a radio mic, so I'll still be able to talk and you'll still be able to hear me. I'm going to turn the volume right up on this loco and I'm going to see how far away I can go before I can no longer communicate with it. So off I go. We'll see how I get on. Right, so I'm now in the room below the loft. I can still hear the loco running. Let me just do a whistle. Yep, yeah, still connected. Right, I'm going to walk a bit further away. Right, I'd say I'm about 30 feet away now. I'm still on the floor beneath the railway room. Have I still got a connection? Yeah, that's a very vigorous whistle there. Definitely heard it. You probably didn't, but I did. Right, I'm going to go down another floor. Right, so now I'm downstairs, about as far as I can get without leaving the house from the loco. I'm pretty much out of earshot, but I might just hear the whistle, so let's try. Yeah, I heard that. So the range seems to be good. Can't really fault that. Seems to be more than you possibly need. What I'm now going to do then is A, find out whether these decoders do indeed work properly on a DCC controller, not the Bluetooth system, and B, I want to find out whether that Scotsman really has the sounds on it or whether that just completely failed. That should tell us whether it's a software issue on the app or an actual decoder issue where it's not retaining the data written to it or something like that. Okay, let's try. So I've got the NCE power cab plugged in now and to start with this did not work. I typed in the loco address that I set in the app and nothing happened so I thought you know it's going to be a flop. However I went on to reprogram the decoder with this controller. I set the same number 4472 and now it is working and even better the sounds are installed onto the loco so I do have control of them. You go, got a piercing whistle there. You've got a whole range of sounds. Oh, blimey. I think that's a safety valve. It's incredibly loud. And uh, of course, yeah, I do also have control over the loco's motion as well. There you go. So, if I had to guess, the issue is a software one. Um, the sounds are there on the decoder, it is not the decoder that isn't working correctly, I think it is just the software. I will try it again with my iPad and the app, but I'm not expecting very much. So let's leave my power cab connected. Let's find out whether I can power this decoder using the power cab system, but operate it using my iPad. So yeah, I know we've got DCC mode enabled, so let's change this back to DCC, uh, no, to Bluetooth, there we go, and go back. So yeah, the same is true. I still don't have access to the sounds. They are on the decoder, but for some reason, the app is not letting me access those sounds. They're just not loading in. I've tried restarting the app. I've tried reblowing the sounds to the decoder. I may be doing something wrong. There may be a reason why I'm not getting the sound functions here, but uh, yeah, I'm not doing. So that's not great. Right, folks, I've solved it. Look, here they are. I've got control now over the sound. And here's what I had to do. Hopefully it's going to go off. Yeah, so I went to locomotive settings. And you go down to the browse profiles. This is the way I got to it. I opened the installed profile. And then I hit import function map. And then as soon as I did that, I've got my list of functions. Now, two things. 
I don't know why it didn't do this automatically when I installed that profile onto the Loco. I would say it should have done. Second of all, even without a function map installed, why couldn't I still operate the functions even though they weren't all defined? Function 0, function 1, 2, 3, they should still have been there, I think, so that I could have used them and then I wouldn't have been thinking there was something wrong. But there we go, that is solved. I've now got the option to turn on sounds. I've still got access to the whistles. It works. And very, very easily, I can switch over to my locomotive settings. I can set the loco to DCC mode and then I can use a DCC controller to control the loco, just like that. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, I think I've overcome the issues now. Seems to be working a lot better than it was before. Let's go back to Bluetooth mode. There we go, I can still control it. I don't know if I can do both at the same time. No, so I suppose that would have been a lot to ask for. But no, it seems to be very, very flexible, very functional. There are some pros and cons, but overall, I'm quite impressed. So there you have it. That was my first experience of Hornby's new HM7000 control system, which uses Bluetooth. And ultimately, I think this is fantastic. It works well now that I've got everything sorted out. Bit of a hiccup getting the Scotsman to work, but that was mainly because I didn't know that I had to import the function map. Once I did that, it all worked perfectly. So you've got a very, very inexpensive and very, very powerful system here that I have to say works better than any other DCC system I have used in the past, and that goes for the NCE power cab that I reviewed not too long ago as well. Let's talk about some pros and cons of this system then. The first pro is the price, and this is the biggest pro as well, I think. Not only are these decoders incredibly cheap compared with other sound decoders on the market, usually it costs you at least £100 or more to get a decent sound decoder. This is almost half the price of that. We're talking £60 to £70 depending on where you get it. When you consider the functionality of these decoders and that they also stand in as a control system as well as just a decoder, that almost renders other manufacturers of DCC decoders obsolete. I can't understand now why you would want to spend over £100 on a decoder from another manufacturer when you can spend £62.99 on this decoder and get all of the other features. So for me, those other manufacturers are in trouble because this wipes the floor with them, really. The other major pro is the ability to change the DCC sound profiles basically at the press of a button. I think other decoders do allow you to do this, but you certainly can't just push a button and have it done. From what I understand, it is quite a big, long, drawn-out process. With this one, yes, it takes 10 to 15 minutes or so, but you can just choose your locomotive, you can press that button, and the software will do it for you. There are a few pros and cons to this system in itself. Obviously, you've only got what Hornby have set up for you. You haven't got an infinite list of different locomotive profiles to choose from. Hopefully, this list will grow, but it's unlikely to completely cover all of the different locomotives from other manufacturers, but we'll talk about that later on. The next pro is the software. This is very powerful, it is very responsive. You've got full control here. You can change all of the CVs you want. You can change your acceleration, your deceleration, your sound volume, the motor start voltage, all of the different motor controls. You really do have full control over the entire decoder as you would from another DCC controller. Also, the ease of use is pretty good. It did not take me long to get up and running with this, and the responsiveness of the controls as well is fine. You push the button and you get a response immediately. There's no sort of faffing around, there's no waiting. That is good as well. The next pro is the sound quality. Absolutely fine. The speakers are not huge, but obviously if you want to put a better quality speaker in, you can because they're disconnectable, but they're fine. Yeah, it sounds all right. I think the quality of the sounds is noticeably a bit better than on the TTS chips, and no doubt the sound quality of the files will have an effect on that as well, so maybe some are better than others. I don't know. Another pro with these decoders is that they do not have any less functionality than a traditional DCC decoder in that you can still use a, a regular DCC 
20cc controller to operate these decoders. You literally push a button on the app and then it's a regular DCC decoder and you can use it with your NCE power cab or whatever else. That's incredibly powerful. But then with the push of a button, you've then got control on your smart device, which is even better, I think. That degree of flexibility is completely unprecedented, isn't it? On to some of the cons then, and the first one was the size of the decoders. This has a varying impact. I think with the 21 pin decoder, wasn't too much of a problem. They tend to be larger decoders anyway, so the size of that one wasn't a problem. And indeed, fitting this into my D11 locomotive caused no problems at all. It fit in there perfectly. The real problem was with the Next18 decoder. I could not find a 00 locomotive that that decoder would fit into. I showed you a lot in this video and I tried a lot others as well. I tried it in the Dapol manner or the other Dapol locos with the smoke box loading. Too wide and too long to fit in those. I also tried it in the Backman 03 shunter. Could not fit it in. So you're going to want some large loco to fit that in if it's 00 and most of the large ones are 21 pin or the Plux ones. So completely useless in double O as far as I'm concerned. They do fit into the TT locos. So if you want to chip your TT locos and run them on this system, that worked marvelously well. But next 18, it's a bit of a no-no. If you can find a loco in double O that one of these decoders will fit into, please comment down below, but I could not find one. Another con is the lack of custom sounds. Now, for all I know, there could be a way to do this, but looking through the app as I have, I cannot find a way for you to record your own sounds and upload them to the decoders. If this is not a feature of these decoders, then I think it really should be because then, if that's possible, the world is your oyster. You could put whatever sound profile you want onto your loco, you could design your own, you could download your own from other sources, then you've really got some power. At the moment, it's decent. You've got a fairly good range of different profiles to install, but it's not infinite and it's not customizable as far as I can tell. Again, if you know a way to do this that I haven't discovered, please do comment down below. Another issue is that it doesn't seem to be possible for you to use a decoder's functions unless you import a function map. I think it would be better if you could just use a decoder's functions without having to import one, because I thought there was something wrong when I'd installed all the sounds onto my Scotsman and there was no obvious way to access them. That's just a minor thing that could be fixed in software, I think. Another con is the amount of time it takes these decoders to wake up and resume operation after they've experienced an interruption. On DCC mode, i.e. if you're using a DCC controller, this is not so much of a problem. I would say it behaves pretty much the same as other DCC decoders. About three seconds for it to resume operation. On Bluetooth mode though, things were much worse. It was taking 10 seconds to resume, and on one occasion it didn't resume, it just stopped and I had to reset the app. That's not ideal. You really don't want to have to wait for 10 seconds for a loco to start moving again after it's cut out on points or whatnot. Now, Hornby have come up with a solution to this, the power bank. But if you can't fit the decoder into several locomotives, you're not gonna be able to fit the decoder, the speaker, and a large power bank into these locos as well. So it's not really a perfect solution. This will be fine for large diesels and possibly tender locos. There'll be a lot of space for a power bank there. But then again, those locos have lots of wheels and lots of pickups, so the chances of a cutout are much slimmer anyway. It's really these small locos like tank engines that are really going to need the power bank, and as far as I'm concerned, it's impossible. It's impossible because the decoder won't fit into these locos. That's a serious problem. At the moment, smaller locos are not compatible with this system. I can only say that with certainty about the next 18 locos, but I can't see it being any different for the others. If Hornby release a six pin decoder, it's going to have to be small because it's not going to fit otherwise, is it? Ultimately though, I think this system is revolutionary. What you get here for the money is just unprecedented. Like I say, to the point where other manufacturers of DCC decoders are going to have to do something. They're going to have to pull their prices down or implement something similar because value for money is now terrible from those manufacturers. When you can pay half the price, more or less for one of these decoders and you get a lot more functionality, a lot more control and a lot more customizability. 
I personally will never spend £100 on a DCC sound decoder now because you can get one of these and they do a lot more for a lot less money. So let me know what you think about this. Have you purchased one of these decoders? Have you tried it and what do you think about it? Do you think the cons are much of a problem here? Are they going to be ironed out, do you think? Or are these going to stop this system from overtaking traditional DCC decoders? Let me know what you think. Otherwise, though, I'm quite impressed. I might buy a few more of these decoders and install them into some other locos to see how that works. But I think for now, that will just about do it. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon. All right, cheers, folks. You take care. Well folks, it's the next day and I'm adding a little extra at the end of this video because the Next18 pin decoder has now burnt out. It's the next day I went to run it in a rolling stock review, which you're going to see soon, and there was some crackling from the speaker, I could smell burning, and the decoder is completely dead. So I guess you would say that that's another slight con, at least with the decoder I've got here, because it only lasted a day.